Hi, my name is Kate St. George. I'm the manager at Cream City Yarn, and today we are going to start knitting our Fair Isle hat. Yay! <laughs> um, we are going to start by casting on 136 stitches, and then we will start right in with the color work. It's going to be a, a rib with color work in it which may seem daunting at first, but is actually quite easy and it gets your brain kind of going on a nice jog. Um, you should by now have your colors picked out and your yarn ready to go. The ones you're going to need immediately are your base, which I've chosen white for my base, which will be the main body of your hat. And then you will need your B yarn, which would also be the outer petals of the flower if you're looking at the Katie's Kep pattern like I am. Um, I've changed it up as you can see from my first video and I'm going to be using this pink as my base and I've switched out the light purple. So I did indeed, I did switch. Um, then you are going to be using the C yarn, which I've chosen to be my yellow. And then you will use the D yarn, which I'm gonna use this nice pretty dark purple. Um, uh, aside from that, we are just going to be getting through the brim of the hat today. We will not be doing the increases or I won't be doing the increases until uh, the next video where we'll do increases and the color work body of the hat. And then on the last video, we will go through decreasing in the crown of the hat and finishing your hat. Uh, hopefully you join me for this fun ride and we will get started. To start, you are going to need your size US 3 16 inch circular needle. Um, mine are metal tipped, but they also come in bamboo and olive wood and many different other tips. Personally, I like these little metal guys. They have a nice sharp tip and they, they grab the yarn really easily and they're nice and slick so the yarn moves quickly because I am a fast knitter and I, I like to move fast. Um, the other thing you're going to need to cast on is a stitch marker that you will use at the end. This little, I mean, it's super cute. This little guy is a Cocoa Knits split ring stitch marker. I like these guys a lot. Um, some people might not because they tend to catch, but it doesn't really bother me. And I like being able to take them out and hook them on things. So those, those are one of my favorite stitch markers. And you will need your color A yarn, which is this for me. Um, I'm going to switch now to having my hands so you can see what I'm doing. I will be using the German Twisted, it's also called the Old Norwegian Cast On, but you can also cast on with a long tail cast on. I'm going to link two videos at the in the description on slow mos for how to do that, and I will kind of go through the long tail or the German cast on as I'm doing it for this video. So with any cast on, long tail or German Twisted, you are going to measure out a length of yarn before you cast on so you can have this kind of pre-made um, base row for your, your work. Um, the way I do that is I kind of pick about an inch per stitch, not really, because this is a pretty small, it's usually about an inch per stitch, so I do about 10 at a time. So this is about 10 inches of my yarn and I count off by 10. So I'm knitting or I'm casting on 136 stitches. So I will be measuring out 13 of these little kind of 10 inch sections. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Give it a little extra just for good luck. Uh, you don't have to do it this method, but if you do, that's the way I do it. Um, sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. That's knitting. You're just guessing. There is no kind of stable way to do this. You just kind of go with it. And if it's a little too long, you snip it off at the end. I know that feels like a terrible waste of wool, but really what's, you know, three, four inches to to the rest of the hat. If it's a ton of yarn left over, you can always, you know, rip it back out and try again. Some people that would kill their hearts, but <laughs> it's if it's really bothering you, take care of it. Um, it's your, your project. Don't let the yarn be the boss of you. The way I start out my, um, my German Twisted, or I like to call it Old Norwegian because that's the video I used to learn off of it too. So if I slip back into that, 
Just know I'm saying the same thing, either old Norwegian or German twisted. Um, German twisted is much, um, it's the term that's more well known than old Norwegian cast on. I do not know why, but here we go. This is the tip of my needle and I go around and scoop and get a little twist first. And then I slingshot my hands. And then I go under, grab this stitch or this piece of yarn here, go through the center. So I've got a first twist. Then I grab here on the top. And then you go through this open hole here, down here. And so here's your new stitch. And in order to get it off, the uh, your finger, you have to like slingshot your hand, which watch my thumb, I'll try and do it slowly. You drop the loop, come under and grab here and pull tight. And now you have a new stitch. I will do it again. So I go under, grab, Go up top and grab, come through the center, and pop it out. You'll know you're doing it right if there is a little like bubble stitch, almost looks like a pearl on your needle. Again, around, up, top, through the center, and whoop, slingshot. I'll do it a little quicker. It's easier when you're going quickly. And I'll go my normal speed for you to see. I think I should probably move it back. And as I'm doing this, you'll see that it's eating up yarn on both sides. So it's taking it from the ball and it's taking it from that length that I measured out. Um, I'll do it again really slow so you can see again. So I've got my hands in slingshot position. I've got these two strands here and I'm going to poke both my finger and or my forefinger and my thumb through. So I've got this little triangle and I use a, a little tension here to keep my yarn nice and straight, and not get away from me. And then I rotate my hands down. And this is actually too long. So rotate my hands down. So I've got this thumb area where I'm going to be working. And I go underneath, come around, grab my yarn, whoop, grab the top yarn, so it's creating the twist, and then I'm coming through that hole so, and pop it out. So around, top, through the hole, and it back around, top, through the hole, bring it back. And you're going to need to do this 136 times, which seems like a lot, but if you are just hanging out, it actually will go by really quick, especially if you're le learning a new uh, way to cast on. You, uh, you might get distracted on learning this. If you don't like the way your cast on looks, if you're learning a new one, um, you can always pull it off and try again until you get a nice tension going. And this is how it's supposed to look. So see my nice little bumps for my stitches? This gives me a really nice edge and it's really quite stretchy. Um, it doesn't have to be the stretchiest cast on for your hat that you can manage. It just has to be a little stretchy. To, so it gets over your head and doesn't like suction to your head or, you know, not be big enough to get your head into it. Um, if you have any more questions, please let me know. I will attach more links because there are people with better cameras and slow-mo cameras and are more, well, who have done this more often online than I have. And I have some favorites that I will link into this video. Um, next, we are going to carry, so you're going to carry on casting on and get 136 stitches. And next, we will join for the round. Before we get really into this knitting part, we want to look at the chart. Um, if you've never re read a chart before, I know they can be daunting. And 
Personally, I prefer a chart over written instructions because charts can't lie to you and they can't have typos. So if it is a square chart like this and you've drawn in these colors, they can't say, oh, that doesn't look, you know, you can't make a, a change. You can't say, whoops, I accidentally wrote a blue. Well, you will see that you put your, your blue wrong in the chart. And to me, this speaks clearer to me than someone trying to write like an increase round right here where you have knit five, make one. What if there was a typo there and no one saw it and you actually had the wrong number? So you always have to think critically about your patterns. If it doesn't make sense, if the numbers are off, um, either refer to the chart to see if the math works out and then maybe let the pattern writer know. But always go critically into your patterns because they're human too and they can make a a typo just as much as anybody else can. So we got to go in with a little kindness as well. Um, back to the chart. Before I use my chart, I look at it and there is a key. It's kind of like reading a map. So there is going to be a key where it tells you what stitches, what symbols look for stitches, look like for stitches. So knit is obviously going to be a clear stitch um, with not, no markings in it. So obviously this hat is mostly knit. Then pearl is going to be the one with the little dot in the center which you can only see at the brim. Then knit two together, which is the slash across right here. And you'll see that here along the top, but nowhere else. And then um, slip one, knit two together and pass the slip stitch over, which is here. Don't worry about that stitch. We will get there in the end, but you don't have to worry about it anywhere in this pattern here or this part in this chart. So don't worry about that one. <laughs> we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Always with chart reading, you start at the bottom of the chart and you read from right to left. So when we're doing this little chart, we're going to start here and this is our first stitch. This represents our first stitch and then our second and this is a four stitch repeat. What that means is you're, once you finish this little grouping of four, you're going to repeat it and do it again. Now, usually with color work charts, they try and make sure that the, the repeat fits in to the the stitches you cast on. So that means that you cast on 136 stitches and you, you're you going to be right if 136 stitches is divisible by four. Um, if you get all the way around and you do not match your chart, so if you do not end on this number four stitch right here, that means either you've cast on the wrong amount of stitches or you've made an error somewhere in your knitting. So be, those are the two places you would check to see what's wrong here? What did I, what did I do wrong? Um, same thing here. When we get into this chart, it's going to be the same formula. So you read from right to left and then you go up the chart. The repeat should be contained within the stitches. There should be no extras. If a chart tells you that there's going to be extras, usually they're on the sides here and they, they do the repeat in the red. Luckily a hat, this hat is kind. It has none of those things. So let's just worry about chart A, which is, that's all we're going to worry about for today right here. Some people use a uh, highlighter tape to mark where they're at or, you know, keep a pencil there or a magnet if they've got a magnet board reader. Um, personally, I don't do any of that stuff because I read so many charts that it just kind of gets into my brain. But feel free to use whatever you, tool you need to. Even a sticky note can help people if you move up the, the chart with your sticky note. I tend to put what colors, if it's a black and white chart like this, I put what colors on the side that I need and I label them in my chart if I've changed them from the original pattern. So you can see that I know I need pink, yellow, and purple here. Do the same with your chart, it probably will help. I will do the same thing here, even though they've put E and B and D, they've, they've, they've spelled it out for you, but I'm gonna still put my, my little colors on the side of the charts whenever I get near them. Uh, I hope this helps you read charts a little bit better. Um, now we're going to tackle the knitting of the chart onto the, the hat, which will be fun. So I have 136 stitches on my needles. I've double count, uh, double counted it twice now, so I'm, I'm sure they're there. I, um, I want to show you this though. I have this much yarn left over from my guess. So that's a little bit of yarn. I don't like that much yarn to be hanging around afterwards. So I'll probably give it about uh, eight inches and break it off. You will not hurt this yarn. It is very forgiving. Um, the other reason I like this cast on and long tail, long tail will give you the same result, is it gives you this little ridge. You can see it right there. This ridge helps you figure out if you are twisted or not. 
um, because it's got this nice little base on it, you can make sure that all this little ridge, all along it, is facing towards the inside of the needle. If it has twisted over, and here, this would be a look, this would be a twist. If it looks like this, see how it looks, how it goes around the needle? You will have a twisted hat. And while that may seem like, who cares if it's a twisted hat, you're knitting. Uh, you will end up with a Mobius strip when you join in the round and you will never have a hat that fits and it won't be able to close. It, it turns out that you can't undo a twist once the twist is in when you're in the round um, knitting. So it is extra important to make sure that your whole line of little stitches are pointed towards the center before you start. This little practice will keep it from, will keep you from hours of frustration later, especially if you're like 10 rows in and you notice that you've got a twist, that's just heartbreaking. So now that we've got our needles oh, all joined up and our little twists all towards the center, you are going to start knitting. Sorry, if I'm moving all over the screen, I am new to this angle. <laughs> you're going to take your stitch marker before you start and you're going to slide it on. And you're going to work from chart A, which funny enough, chart A's first stitch is actually a purl. So you will get your yarn situated and purl your first two stitches so it's all secure and not twisted. Now you can look after you put these two stitch these two purls on your needles like this you can look and see if you're still in the round and no twists. It's better to check now than find out later. So see how this looks? It's pretty stable, it's not going anywhere, so you can mess around with it or pick your different colors. Next, we will add our um, our color B, which is my pink. Okay, so we have our two pearl stitches from the first part of the chart. So the first chart says dot dot, which would be two pearl stitches in white or your main color that you're using. And then the next two stitches have no dots in them, so that means we are going to knit those next two stitches. We are going to do that with the next color. My color happens to be pink. So what I do to start with my next color is I give myself about a four or five inch tail. Doesn't matter, no one's coming at your knitting with a ruler, just kind of do what feels comfortable. I set up joining my new color by starting my knit stitch like this. And you actually, shock and awe, just knit the pink. So just do a knit stitch with that pink. You leave your white behind. I do two color knitting by, well, fair aisle knitting means that you are always using two colors. If it goes more than two, it technically becomes color work. Fair aisle in itself means that there are two colors in a round. Um, that's a fun little tidbit in fact. But what that also means is you can do it a couple different ways. Uh, I like to do it with my pink coming from underneath. So I usually, I do it with two hands when I do color work. I do my color that I would like to shine through. There's a whole thing about dominance with color, but in the way I remember it is, if it's in this hand, in my left hand, then it's going to shine a little brighter when I'm knitting with it. If I were to put my pink in this, in my right hand and throw with it, It'll come, the stitch will come out smaller and my color won't be as bright. So I keep my pink in my left hand and I pick actually this color here. Now, if that is too hard for you, I will show you how to do color work with one hand and that's fine too. Um, but the reason why I keep it in two hands is so that my, my yarns don't twist. You don't actually want them to twist. We do a clever thing here that helps them twist on their own so that you don't get a gap between colors. You, It's called going under and over. I will always bring my pink up from underneath my work and I will always bring my white from over the top of my work, so under and over. Um, because we are doing pearls, just get this guy here in my 
end. We are going to bring this yarn forward like a purl and we're going to purl. So we're repeating our chart. Those four little stitches were our first half of our chart. Now we're going to repeat. And then we put our white yarn to the back. So now we've got two purls, two knits, two purls, and we're going to bring our pink yarn. It's kind of hard to see it this way. We're going to bring our pink yarn up from underneath. If I was going to go over the top, I'd cross it over the top of the, the white, which I don't want to happen. Um, if you find that your yarns get crossed and twisted, it shouldn't be doing that. That means that you're you're switching which direction you're coming from with your, your colors. So you always want your pink to come up from the bottom and that will prevent it twisting. You always want your, your white to come over from the top. It's good to practice this now because you're going to be doing it a lot for the rest of the hat. So again, oh, and this time I'm going to show you how to do it one-handed. If I'm doing it one-handed, I come in under here. Here is my white yarn up top here. I even let it drape over the top of my needle. I don't want that guy. We choose our pink and come up from the bottom. And knit. That's two more stitches I've got done. Let that pink lie. Bring my white yarn. So this is going to go over the top and around through the front, ready to purl. And purl. You can see right here, hopefully that comes into focus, that the pink yarn is coming up from the bottom like a little smile, and the white yarn is coming across the pink like a little frown. And that means that they're not twisting, but they're locking at this point and creating a no, no hole in the fabric. Um, so I'll go for a little bit more so you can kind of watch me. I'm going to switch back to two-handed because one-handed slows me down. <laughs> and if you want to attempt two-handed color knitting, I fully encourage it. It takes a little getting used to because if you are a, a picker, you need to learn to throw, and if you are a thrower, you need to learn to pick, and it can be awkward, but it's definitely worthwhile to try and learn how to do it if you're gonna keep doing color work. So this is my pink, which I will knit. I'm gonna keep doing that because I'm ready, and then I will purl with my white. back, knit with my pink, bring yarn forward, purl with my white. Notice I'm not expending a lot of energy, I'm not twisting my stitches in any way. You can see the yarn kind of getting twisted down here, but that's because I don't have my skein set up. Usually what I will do is I will put my pink over near my left hand and I'd put my white, which fell on the floor over near my right hand and that would prevent any more twisting because it does like to talk, like touch itself and if it touches it will kind of stick together which is nice but also annoying. Move my yarn back. I'm going to keep doing that to go fast. Pearl. Knit. How pretty that looks. And if we switch it and look at the back, you'll see all these little underneath the smiles and the over top frowns. And that means we're doing it consistently and that it will make a nice color work. So I've made it around my first row. You can see my work. And I'm on my last stitch, which is a knit. I just wanted to remind you that if you find out that you made it all the right way around and you have an extra stitch besides this one, that's okay. Knit it together with this stitch if you have an extra one. 
and keep going. Um, I've got my last pink stitch and you see this is kind of loose here. That's normal. It will go away as you keep knitting. And when you finally finish up the hat, you'll be able to kind of close it with any looseness with your little tail that you've left at the beginning. Um, we are going to slip our marker and start reading from chart two, the same way we read row two of the chart, the same way we read um, the first row, and it should be identical. We're actually going to do the same thing three rows, is what the chart says. So we keep knitting, and we're going to purl. And then this is the first, this is what another thing I wanted to see. This is where I first joined my pink yarn. Um, it's going to be a little loose. See how my stitch got really loose there if I pulled? And that's okay. So the way we stop that and you're like, oh no, you wrecked it. No, you haven't. You just pull it kind of shut there and see it's fine. It's a fine stitch again. The other thing you want to know about is probably, well, that's not good English, but what's fine. It's fine. Um, you want to keep your tension throughout this whole thing. So make it nice and stretchy. Shouldn't be so tight that you can't move it. And it shouldn't be so loose that it's like really sloppy and falling off the needles all the way around. Mine usually on a 16 um, almost fall off. But so if I ignore them too much or I go, I jostle it too much, it'll fly off the end. Uh, and if that happens, I just put it back on. I'm going to keep knitting the rest of these next two rows, which should be identical. And I will show you when, when and how to join the next color. Okay, so I've knit my three rows with the pink. You can see how my color work looks on the back side. You can see how I have consistently kept my pink coming up from the bottom and making little smiles and my my white making little frowns and it, it looks like this it looks a little ruffly and that's okay if you've knit a lot of hats and you're used to a rib that kind of pulls in tight this rib is going to spread out a little bit it's not going to be tight like your usual rib so this ruffle is correct when we get farther into the hat it will look nice and flat and i promise you it'll be okay i'm going to finish my last pink and show you how to change colors So I slip my stitch marker, grab my white, purl, so it's nice and stable, my stitch marker is not going anywhere, and now we're going to start with yellow, or my yellow, whatever color you're using is probably fine and beautiful too. Um, I'm going to break my yarn, my pink yarn, because I don't need it anymore. And just let it dangle. It doesn't need to be secure in any way. This is really sticky yarn. It's not going anywhere. Uh, when the hat's finished, or you can do it as you go along if you're waiting for the next video, you can um, you can weave in your ends as you go, or you wait to the end. Personally, I like to wait to the end and weave them all in so I know they look nice. There is a way of knitting them in. I don't like it. <laughs> I've, I've done it a couple times, and I, I must be a control freak in that factor because I, I like placing my my tails in where I think they should go in my knitting. Anyway, it's time to start yellow. So it's going to be the same like we did with the pink. We are going to move our white yarn to the back and jab in like we're going to knit. And then we're just going to leave a little tail and add our yellow. Easy. Now pay attention to your chart here because this middle round only has two rows of color. So I'm only going to do, to do the yellow for two rounds as opposed to the pink and the purple, which go for three. Um, it's good to notice that while you're doing your chart and you're not just zip along. So it's good to refer back to your chart every now and again to know where you, what you're doing as far as how many colors. I have gone blazing ahead before in charts and had to rip back because I totally went where I thought it was supposed to go and it totally wasn't doing that. <laughs> so that's, there is a difference between what you think should be happening and, and what the chart is actually saying. All right. 
I'm going to keep knitting this yellow and white and I will show you what the end of the brim looks like. Okay, so I finished my brim and you can see how my hat looks all the way around. Nice and stretchy. There, better view. And this is what my backside looks like. As you can see, it has a nice little give to it. It's not too tight, not too loose. It's a good little brim of a hat. I'm going to break the purple. And now I'm ready to start on my next chart and the next part of the hat uh, going forward. In the next video, I will show you how to increase per pattern instructions and start on the color work part of the hat. So thank you all for tuning in today and I will see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.